And District 5 County Supervisor Jim Desmond is going to be holding a virtual town hall to hear from residents about this case. He joins us now to discuss. Supervisor Desmond, you just heard that report. Uh, give me your thoughts on the release of this sexually violent predator. Well, Ginger, as you said, you know, he's a three-time sec violent uh, sexual offender. And, you know, he's committed these crimes against children under 10 years old, both boys and girls. You know, and, and he's, you know, a three-time repeat. And he's actually going to have to be under supervision uh, once he gets released here. But he, they've tried. He has not been cured. He has not, you know, been remorseful. And the, he's still going to be having to get treatment. And He's, he's, he's getting out, of my opinion, you know, way too early for the crimes he's committed. In Palma Valley, there's 7,500 people in Palma Valley. Uh, we went, and some of my staff, we visited his, the property area, and I'm going to be visiting it again next week. We're going there, and, you know, there's, there's children, there's swing sets around, there's actually a trailhead uh, right nearby uh, the house that he is supposedly going to be going to be at. I am having a Zoom meeting, uh, a community Zoom meeting, but also there's going to be a hearing on July 31st by a judge to determine if Palma Valley is the right location and people will be able to comment via Zoom. Uh, this is going to be new, but via Zoom, they're going to be able to make comments uh, up to the judge directly about the uh, this this violent, sexually violent this, uh, predator, Joseph Bocklet, uh, moving into Palma Valley. You know, we've seen this in the past where Liberty Healthcare, they go and rent these homes for double what they're worth. We just showed that. We also showed that what's going on in Hacumba Hot Springs. And then, you know, you said, yes, there is this court hearing coming up at the end of the month, but some judges don't hear from the public or some judges, after they do hear from the public, they still go ahead and release them. Do you really feel that the public's voices have potential to be heard this time? Well, I, I do primarily because this normally people, you know, this the, the uh, hearing is held in a courtroom or, or something like that where people have to go drive to and park and, you know, take time out of their days to, to uh, do it. On a Zoom meeting, you can, you know, stay on hold for, you know, and do other things and, and uh, kind of wait, wait it out. So I think there's going to be a lot more participation. We're getting the word out to, you know, the tribes. There's three casinos uh, nearby this uh, location. There's all, you know, get out, get the word out to them and to all the community members, making them aware of, of what the state is attempting to do by putting this, you know, sexually violent criminal who's got be a mental disorder in their community is is just crazy and and quite frankly this guy should still still be in an institution or getting you know rehabilitation uh as, as opposed to being let out in the general public you know i've been getting a lot of emails from residents in palma who heard i was going to be doing this story one resident emailed me saying she's not going to be able to let her grandchildren outside anymore out of fear another resident said that they're now fearing for their safety and they're going to move i mean you brought it up even bocklet himself said the treatment doesn't work and he didn't want to sit there and listen to other people, so he simply left. You know, what can we as the public do to fix what many people are calling a very broken system? Well, this is the state penal system, and they're letting, you know, like you, even you mentioned he got let out early, even though this is the third time. You know, if the, remember when we had three strikes and you're out? Mm -hmm. uh, that would have been very uh, appropriate in, in this gentleman's case, you know, by having this sexually violent predator being let out. And he, he did it three times, and unfortunately, it was mostly to his, his stepkids uh, who were under age 10. I mean, he's just diabolical. He, he doesn't have any remorse. He's not willing to, you know, take training or, or be, you know, be reformed at all. And uh, here he is coming to a community of 7,500 people who, you know, this is not the place for a sexually violent predator at all. I think he should go back in jail. Yeah, and even many of the folks involved in that program say, well, the, the treatment's not going to fix them. It just helps them manage their illness, which is not a comfort to residents. But Supervisor Desmond, I applaud you for listening to residents. We're going to have a link to your Zoom meeting, which again Good. is tomorrow. That's going to be on our website. So folks, if you want to speak up, the supervisor is ready to hear and he's going to work for you. So I really appreciate your time tonight. Well, thanks. And they can contact my office about the Ju uh, July 23rd, I'm sorry, July 31st uh, court hearing as well. We'll have information on how to get into that meeting or that court hearing as well. Thanks. Yeah, it's time to let your voices be heard. All right. Be well. Thank you so much. Thank you.